Ye West has always been in the spotlight for his out of the ordinary standard, but we've seen in some recent weeks his actions have taken a disturbing downward turn. Now for more on this public meltdown and its fallout, let's welcome in clinical psychologist Dr. Catherine Coleman and pop culture expert and political strategist Jonathan Harris. I appreciate you guys coming on the show this morning. Dr. Coleman, I want to go first to you because what Kanye has said about Jewish people is absolutely horrible. Nothing can excuse it. But I did mention yesterday that I believe that he's mentally sick um, just because of the way that he's acting, that we've seen him act in the past. He has bipolar disorder. Do you think that this could be adding to maybe his public rants and, and what kind of help does he need? Well, you're right. I mean, he's been very public about his history of dealing with bipolar disorder. And when we think about bipolar disorder, I mean, colloquially, I think people think about mood swings, but really it, it's grandiose thoughts, thinking that you have superpowers, you're the smartest person in the world, lack of impulse control, reckless behavior. Um, and it's pretty, it seems pretty obvious to me that a lot of Kanye's recent behavior, it's reckless. Um, it seems impulsive. Now, does bipolar disorder make people homophobic or anti-Semitic? Um, no, there's no mental disorder that's going to make people that way. Um, those, those feelings have probably always kind of been underneath there. But the fact that maybe he's in the middle of an episode of some kind, maybe exacerbating that and kind of removing that filter that typically most people would have and allowing this stuff to kind of spew out. It's horrific, the hate that has been spewing. Jonathan, he is getting a lot of backlash about this, though, and it's even hitting his wallet. He's now no longer a billionaire after Adidas, Gap, and Skechers have cut ties with him. His new net worth, last time I checked, was around $400 million, still a lot. But does the yeah. rapper ever come back from this to reach the stature that he was on before? Well, you know, it's interesting to me. I, I, I am amazed that I think for many other artists, if they had said, half of the things that Kanye has said. I mean, because remember, this isn't new. I mean, he's been doing this for years. Um, that Their careers would have been over. And it's sort of interesting to me the, the wiggle room that we give Kanye West in particular. And I think it has a lot to do with the fact that we generally let our celebrities get away with a little more than the average person does. And I think it's because we have a tendency to associate their work with positive moments in our life, music and that we enjoy. And so I I don't know that anybody has said his career in music is over. I mean, as you mentioned, he's still worth almost half a billion dollars. He's not suffering. He's probably not going to go anywhere anytime soon. And I think kind of what your uh, other guest uh, spoke, spoke to as well, we know that he has talked about suffering from mental illness. So I think if people believe that he is and he gets this under control and can kind of chalk this up to an episode, people might be forgiving. But he's, he's really eroding a lot of that goodwill. Right. And, and he's doubling down. That's kind of one of the bigger problems is that if he would have just apologized and said, hey, I'm seeking help. I'm trying to change my thinking. I think people would have been more forgiving as well. But I mean, Dr. Right. Coleman, his words have impact. I mean, in Los Angeles now, we're seeing hate groups put up signs on the freeway agreeing with him. It, it's it's horrible. And people are feeling empowered to be blatantly racist. What kind of influence do celebrities have and and what kind of responsibility do they have to recognize that? Well, I mean, Kanye especially, I mean, talk about one of the biggest celebrities and such such a mogul, right? And has had such a big following from all types of different groups over the past couple of years. And so he's garnered this big following. And so people look up to people like him, right? That he he is, you know, kind of a beacon in, in some communities and people want to be like him. They want to say things like him. He doesn't get in trouble, right? Um, and so they think, well, he's saying it. So, you know, that must be true. Um, right? He's kind of seen as a genius. And so there's this kind of groupthink mentality when a person you know, has this kind of following and there's this diffusion of responsibility that people think that they can then get away with this stuff because they see him doing it. Um, and because he's not admitting right now that it's, that it's a bad thing, they think, OK, well, this is kind of the way and everybody else is doing it, so I can do it, too. Right. And he has just gotten away with it for so long. Jonathan, I mean, we've seen you said it. We've seen these outbursts before from Ye, starting with Taylor Swift. Ironic that she just released her new album with the song Karma <laughs> on it. Do you think that these moves are coming um, just, I don't know, <laughs> one too much after the other? Uh, you, you, you know, I think <laughs> if you asked anyone you know, would would they have had 
white supremacists using the words of a black man to attack the Jewish community on their 2022 bingo card. I don't think anybody saw that coming. So it's definitely not something I think that any of us kind of anticipated. But at the same time, he has been doing this for so long. It just seems like he keeps kind of ratcheting it up. And, and the lack of responsibility to, to make those comments, I, I forget which celebrity, it might have been Jamie Lee Curtis, was talking about just kind of what you touched on. Like, your words as a celebrity have power, and what you don't realize you're doing is you're infusing a lot of people who do hold negative views. And Kanye West, I think, has apologized and then doubled down in the same interview, I think, with Piers Morgan and so on and so forth. And so it's like you want to forgive him, but then he goes back and says the same ridiculous things. And this isn't even uh, this isn't even touching on the things that he said that have adversely affected the black community, though. White Lives Matter T-shirts, the lying about George Floyd. I mean, uh, such a hurtful thing to do to their family still recovering from what they they've experienced. And it's just like at a certain point you have goodwill toward him. But at the same time, he's a grown man doing reckless, irresponsible, hurtful, dangerous things. And he he deserves to be held accountable for it. And right. hopefully he he can get it under control before he destroys his entire career. I hope that as well. Dr. Catherine Coleman, Jonathan Harris, thank you both so much for your time today. No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to don't think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.